This is Twit. Yeah, let's talk Did about you Chip. you want to know what they what they actually said? Yeah, I'm actually, actually confused. Yeah, because it sounded like it was now part of Zigbee Alliance. Is that right? So when they announced it back in December, they created it under the Zigbee Alliance. Oh, okay. Here's my sources and common sense say that eventually the Zigbee Alliance, if Chip is going to be the more successful project, will one day separate these out. But for now, and Chip will run on top of Zigbee. Thread, right. Bluetooth, here's the uh, wave, here's the pyramid from the Zigbee Alliance page. And if you go to the GitHub, they actually take that blue application layer and they split it out even more. Oh, interesting. So they talk about okay. you know framing it, the framework for the request. They talk about security. They don't give you a lot of details. Um, but the new news here, the biggest news is that they're still on track to release products next year. So. Yay! Now, <clears throat> um, they're also. I do have a question because Zigbee is a competitor to Z Wave and not compatible with Z Wave, right? Until yes. the big players, Apple and Google and Amazon, got into this, it was like Zigbee versus Z Wave. And then even before that, what was the what was the other one that everybody bought that? You know, it was practically the clapper. It was like, really? Anyway, there were these warring protocols, none of which understood anybody else. Mm -hmm. If CHIP is part of the ZigBee alliance, does it eliminate Z-Wave, or is the, are, are, are they all just going to come together? Yeah. Well, they're not necessarily going to come together. So the thing to know is ZigBee and Z-Wave and all, they solved radio issues. So they solved the actual connectivity problems. So they so were at a hardware layer. Issues. They were really lower down. Yeah. Yeah. So when you think about what CHIP is going to solve, CHIP is going to solve, it's going to create a standardized layer for things like, hey, how do we connect this connected light bulb to the internet? It's a software And then layer. once, yeah, yeah and then, yeah, the application layer. Uh, software. Application yes. layer, yeah. Then it's also going to say things like, it's going to build a data model or a framework, as we were talking about earlier with things. This is going to say, a, and th that the light bulb will be able to say things like, I'm a light bulb. I can turn on, I can turn off, I can change colors, I can do this. And all of that will be standardized because right now you actually have to do that individually for each platform. And it's a pain in the I butt. know. Uh, so I can see why manufacturers so, would like to say, look, we'd like to have one application layer that talks to everything. Right? That's what they're going to The question get. then, yes. But then the question becomes... How far does that standard go? Does it go so far like HomeKit did that you don't need to download the app or like the connected door lock you bought? Because the people making the connected door locks are like, hey, I need you to download my app. I want your address. So these are some of the fights that people are having. Fights is a really strong word. But these are some of the debates in places where you're trying to get value. And if you're like, you know, should I be able to talk to Madam A and Siri and ask them both the same thing? Should I be able to set up Madam A and Siri in a, once and have it work across all of those platforms? That's not going to happen. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. We got a ways to go. That's beyond just the radio. We got a ways to go.